In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your first Solidity smart contract on Ethereum. This is going to be a step-by-step -step coding tutorial and we are going to use an online tool called Remix. You won't have anything to install on your computer. It's very easy to use. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and not eat the blocks. I help Web2 developers to transition to Web3. And before we get started, quick advertisement for my Web3 Bootcamp. This is a four months program to turn you into a professional Web3 developer. This is the fastest way to get a six figure job in the industry. And if you want to apply for the next cohort, check out the link down below. All right, so let's get started for our coding tutorial. So what are we going to code for our first smart contract? We are going to do a vested token smart contract. So what is this? All right, so in a traditional startup with equity, oftentimes the founders and employees don't get all the equity at once, but the equity is dripped over several years to keep them incentivized to perform at their best. And in the crypto world, unfortunately, we don't really use this. Usually founders get all the tokens right away and this creates some misalignment of incentives. So we can do exactly the same thing as with normal equity. We can drip the token to the founders over several years and we can do this with a Solidity Smart, a Solidity Smart contract. This is a perfect use case. So we are going to create this. So the first thing that we will need to use is Remix. Remix is an online IDE for Solidity. Solidity is a programming language for Ethereum smart contract. This is the most popular one. So I recommend to focus on this one. Solidity is a little bit tricky because on the surface, it looks like JavaScript, but actually the way it works is very different. So let's get started. So first you need to load Remix in your browser and then you go in the file explorer here and we are going to create a new smart contract that uh, we are going to call uh, vestedreward.sol. Sol is the file extension. Um, and then we are going to put the pragma statement. So this uh, tells the Solidity compiler, which version we are using. So let's use the latest version available. Uh, and we finish our statement with a semicolon, like all statements in Solidity. Um, let's make sure that we're using the latest version here in the compilation tab. Yes, let's make sure that we've activated auto compile. Okay, so we are going to first define our smart contract so let's call it vested reward usually by convention we use the same name as the file and everything inside our smart contract will be in the curly braces here so we are going to manipulate an erc20 token in this smart contract so an erc20 token this is one of the most popular type of assets on ethereum and so to manipulate this kind of asset, we need to import some code. So we're going to use an import statement and we are going to use every popular 3 library called open Zeppelin. So you go to this URL and we are going to copy paste uh, this URL here. Uh, okay. So here we import the interface of ERC20. So, and here invested reward, we're going to store a variable that points to the token we are going to manipulate. So first we need to define the type of the variable. So that's a ERC20 contract. And here we reference what we imported from open Zeppelin. Then we make it public so that we can see the variable from outside the smart contract and we call it token and after we are going to define a constructor so a constructor is a function that is executed only once when you deploy the smart contracts we pass the address and we are going to instantiate our token like this so we reference the token that we defined before um, and here we use the yas20 interface again and we pass the address of the token and so now we can manipulate this token with this variable 
and when you define a variable like this outside of a function it means that this is a state variable which means this is stored inside the blockchain okay so next we are going to create a function to create an allocation of token so this is where we are going to set up how many tokens the founders and employees will receive so we use the function keyword to define a function and then we call this create allocation and first we're going to pass a couple of arguments so here the address of the recipient and after we're going to specify what is the amount of token that's going to be distributed every month so for that we need an integer variable so we use the uint type and we call this amount per month and the last variable it actually when your screen is too small like this you can put every variable on its own line and the last variable will be the number of months uh, so for example if there is 10 token per month and there is 10 months that means in total we're gonna have 100 token okay so this is all our argument and after after we are going to create the body of our function so first we need to transfer the token to the smart contract so we're going to assume that the address that called this function create allocation has already enough token um, so we are going to transfer the token uh, by using the token variable that we defined before and one of the function of yes 20 is transfer from uh, this is called delegated transfer it allows you to transfer some token on behalf of someone else so here we are going to transfer some token from the sender of this transaction so that's the, the address that called this function and the recipient is the address of this smart contract uh, once again let's put everything on its online and after that let's specify how many token needs to be transferred so we're going to multiply a month per month by months so that we have all the tokens that we need for the distribution and once we have this we need to keep track of this allocation in another variable so for that we will need two things so first we will need a custom data structure that we define with the struct keyword so let's call this reward um, and inside we are going to define a few fields so first the amount per month for this reward then the number of months then the amount that was already distributed and finally we also need to keep track of the start date so there is no type for dates in solidity so we use integer and inside we put timestamps and after we also need to keep track of a collection of rewards so for this we're going to use another type called a mapping so this is like a key value store and so the type of the keys uh, will be the address of the recipient for the reward and it's going to map to reward and here we make it public so that we can see it from outside and we call this uh, rewards with the s so here that means in the memory of our smart contract will have different address like the zero x uh, whatever that maps to a reward so uh, a month per month uh, this month uh, uh, this uh, etc and for each address like this is going to map to uh, another reward um, by the way here we miss a s um, okay so now we have our mapping so we're going to use it in the create allocation function uh, so here uh, let's update our mapping and so to create a new entry you need to use the square bracket notation um, and here the address is the address of the recipient and to instantiate a new struct uh, you reference the name of the struct and then you pass all the arguments of the field uh, all the fields in order so here first the first field 
is amount per amount. So we reference the argument of the function. Uh, here, let's put it uh, at the next line. All right, uh, then months, uh, then uh, after that, it will be the amount distributed. So at the beginning, this is zero and then the start date. So we can reference the current timestamp with the built-in variable of 3t called block.timestamp. Um, okay, and so with this, we have our create allocation function. And so next, we are going to create another function to distribute the reward. So here, let's call this distribute rewards. And we need to specify who is the recipient. And here we need the external keyword, so it tells Solidity that we can call this function from outside the smart contract. And by the way, I forgot this here, so let's add it. Um, okay, first we need to create a pointer to the reward in our mapping so that it's easier to manipulate this reward that is stored in our memory. So we define a variable of type reward. We use the storage keyword to say that we want to create a pointer to the storage and, and we don't want to copy this into temporary memory. Uh, here we call this reward and here we reference the mapping and here with the recipient. And here we're gonna make sure that this reward actually exists. So for that, how we're going to do this, we're going to make sure that the start field is superior to zero. And in Solidity, mappings are a little bit spatial. Uh, these things here, actually in a mapping, you can reference any entry, even the one that were never instantiated. But if you do so, all the fields here will have a, a default type. So for start, the default type of integer is zero. Um, so if we see a start date that is equal to zero, it means that it was not instantiated, so it does not exist. So here the error message will be this reward uh, doesn't exist. Uh, so here, in order to pass this condition, start here needs to be above zero. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error and the execution of the function is going to stop. So after we are going to calculate what is the amount of token that has already vested since the beginning. So we will need to do some calculation for that. So first, we reference the current timestamp and then we subtract the start of the smart contract and all of this is these timestamps here are in second um, so we need to define divide this by 30 days to have this quantity in months and so 30 days this is a built-in variable that is provided by solidity and that gives you the number of second uh, in days Yes, I know that months are between 30 and 31 day, but here we are going to simplify and just consider that this is 30 days and this is going to be a whole division. So for example, if we are at 2.5 months when we call this function, then here the result of this will be just two. And here we are going to multiply this by the number of token that we need to pay every month. So that's amount per month. Okay. And after we need to check what is the amount to distribute. So amount to distribute. So this is the amount that has vested minus what was already distributed. Uh, so here amount distributed. Okay. And here we're going to require that this amount is superior to zero. So amount to distribute should be superior to zero. Otherwise, we're gonna display an error message and we're gonna inter interrupt the transaction. So no reward to distribute. Okay, and so let's add our semicolon here. And after we are going to update our mapping. So amount distributed. So we're going to increment this by the amount that we are about to distribute. And finally, we are going to do the token distribution. So we reference our token. 
we are going to transfer. So this time we use the transfer function. This is not a delegated transfer, but this is a direct transfer. And we reference the recipient. And after we pass the amount to be distributed, so amount to distribute. And that's it. And here you notice that anybody can call this distribute rewards function, but it doesn't matter that we don't do access control because in any case, the money is going to go to the recipient. So it's not possible to hack this function. So that's it for this coding tutorial. You still have a lot of other things to learn before you can become a professional Web3 developer. For example, you need to learn about smart contract security, smart contract testing, etc. And we learn all these things in my Web3 Bootcamp. This is a four months program to turn you into a professional Web3 developer. And if you want to apply to the next cohort, you can check out the link down below. That's it for today. Bye.